in 2009, Buchi was here on our program to tell us about his life and tell us about his book. Let's just watch what he said to us, uh, clips of what he said to us in 2009. Many times when I talk about my Christian life, yes. um, I could come from the point of view of um, an ex-university lecturer. I could come from the point of view of um, an ex-nightclub DJ. I could come from the point of view of um, a clothier, a tailor, or a bus driver. Many sides to one man. But I think that what counts, really, is that this is not the man that was. 30th of December in 1992, I walked into a church, not on a Sunday, a church in Ikeja. It turned out to be Pastor Chris Oyakilome of Christ Embassy Church. But I didn't think I was going to leave another 24 hours because um, people were after me. Even though I wasn't worried about, um, I wasn't so much worried about um, the gunmen who were running after me. Um, I knew that I needed something that those young persons had in church. Joy. In one word, joy. I pleaded with him to help me get born again. And he said I could do it right there and then. And so I knelt down and got saved. In the University of Lagos, where I studied, I had um, become a member of um, a confraternity. Of course, when, when you live that kind of life, you would always walk looking at, over your shoulder That's every right. now and then. That's why gunmen were after me okay. at that time. But that day I heard a voice say to me, you don't belong here. From the 30th of December, 1992, until the day that I got married, there was no um, appetite for sin left in me. So for me, it was not um, just a quick transition from the club or from the cult straight to ministering. But now looking back, I'm thankful to God I didn't make music one day before when I made it. It is well, it is well in the name of Jesus. It is well with my soul today. At, at the 10th anniversary, I released a book, yes. my first major book called Seize Fire. Yes. It's a novel based on the campus courts experiences in the campus, in campus cultism, yeah. but it's titled Ceasefire. That was Buchi in 2009. Now let's see what, you know, the word of God is dynamic. Let's see what he's been able to do with the same book that he launched and what God is doing in his life today. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Okay, my dear brother, Buchi, you're welcome. Thank why you should I so still much. love you in 2012? <laughs> Can you give me a very good reason why I should still love you in 2012? Well, I'll just offer one. It's in your nature to love. <laughs> what else can you do? How are you? Very well. It's very nice well. to have Thank you. you. Thanks. Um, the last time we spoke, we, stuck, we talked about your book. And the next time I saw you, you were launching your new CD, yes, Judah. Yes. I know that so much has happened in your life since the last time we spoke. A whole lot. Plenty. Yes, indeed. Including pancake. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's start from what has come out of the book Ceasefire. Um, the project Ceasefire mm -hmm. 
has come out from the book Ceasefire. Mm -hmm. um, I went to Adwekiti. Okay. I went to the University of Adwekiti. Okay. I thought to myself, there are so many of these students. In fact, not so long ago, there was a newspaper report um, called Violence in Adwekiti. Three people shot dead and so much mayhem all over the place. So I went to Adwekiti and I decided to talk to the students and sing to them and get them to see what this cult violence is all about. Because your book basically was about cult violence. Cult violence. That's yes. right. Mm -hmm. That's right. And then Project Ceasefire is um, a crusade against violence yes. in general, yes. but in particular cult violence, violence amongst young people. So I went to Adwekiti and had this concert. Okay. It promised to be a very large concert. So the stage was big, the field was big, mm -hmm. the sound was big, <laughs> and I think now I respect pastors the more. <laughs> Just when I was about to mount the stage and begin to sing, yes. the heavens opened. It was a torrential rain. You know, blew, the wind blew everything down. Okay, but we gathered it together, moved to an adjoining hall, the, the people I came to sing to joined me to carry the music speakers and all. And we went to an adjoining hall and um, we had the maiden edition of Project Ceasefire. Thankfully, from that meeting came about 20 people who not only gave their hearts to Christ, but some of them renounced cultism that day. Like I've always said, the, the terrible thing about cultism is that many who are involved in it do not understand it fully. They don't know where it's coming from. They don't know why they're doing what they're doing. They don't know what spirit has possessed them. And, um, but I was able to share that with them. And about 20 of them gave their hearts to Christ. And then I went to Babcock University. Right. At the invitation of the Vice Chancellor, Professor Mark Inde. <laughs> who had read the book ceasefire and invited me to come talk to the students so on the 20th of november last year 2011 the entire babcock university emptied into the stadium and there were about 8500 of them again i shared with them i shared my music with them i shared my testimony with them and so many people poured out that night to give their hearts to Christ. And I felt so good. I felt so fulfilled. So from the book Ceasefire has come Project Ceasefire, a concern, like we say, that became a concert. And um, so many people have come out of these calls. Many more will come out yes. because we will continue Project Ceasefire. In fulfillment of the word of God that says it's comforted you so that you can comfort others, others. with the same comfort Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know. And then from that, after the project ceasefire came, uh, Judah Charities? That's right. What is that about? I released a new album yes. titled Judah, Praise, yes. Celebration. Celebration, yes. And um, I thought this time it would be wonderful to give the proceeds of the album to people who have been victims of violence, children who have been victims of violence, and to some other children who have been taken off the streets to stop them from getting into violence. Now this, is, um, this stems from my understanding that violence does not begin and end with an explosion of a car, maybe a car bomb or a suicide bomber. Violence begins when a child is neglected. Violence begins when a child runs the streets unchecked unparented. Anyway, on the 15th of October, at the launch of the album Judah, I got these children, there are about 300 of them, in a place called the Stevens Center in Abelkuta. The children of the Stevens Center, Abelkuta, with their father, 
Brother Isaac Wusu. Reverend Isaac Newton Wusu, but who likes to be called Brother Isaac Newton Wusu? Walked in. Um, these are some of the children from the Stephen Center. And I would not like to close without having the people who came to see you. Please come, please come. At least so they can see you. Come, come. Oh, you brought magazines for the people. We'll keep them out there so that when they're leaving, they can pick up copies from Voice of the Christian Matters. These are just some of 300 children at the Stephen Center in Abeokuta. Sir, we heard you were stuck in traffic, but um, just a greeting to you. Okay. Thank you, Buchi. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, um, I'm very pleased to be here with my beautiful wife here today. She's right here. And, uh, some of our children from Abel Kuta Student Center International, we are from various states in Nigeria. We are from Meduguri, from Dogonawa. We have over 500 people who are murdered in one day from Meduguri, from Boko Haram, from Joss, various crises, from Kano and Kaduna. We are so pleased to be honored by you and supporting us uh, for these past 10 years. Some of our children are in the university already, uh, about dozens of them. <laughs> and. Um, we could never have been very successful this way if not for your kind of support and uh, for the kind of passion that my brother Bushi have for children. Children who were orphaned during various religious crises in northern Nigeria, apart from losing their parents, some of them had the extra trauma of watching their parents and siblings die. So it's not enough to just give to them. We have to be um, their siblings. We have to be their parents. We have to attempt to take the place, the void that's been created in their lives and heal their wounds. But you know, the thing that struck me about the children of the Stephen Center is that even they preached forgiveness to me. When I asked them how they felt about the people who killed their parents, some of them even smiled and said, I have forgiven them. I have forgiven them because Jesus said to forgive them. And, you know, that struck me. Because even I am greatly challenged. My capacity to love as a Christian is greatly challenged. When I hear of um, Christians being killed and all these riots and violence, people being uh, beheaded, pastors being killed, churches burnt. But if these children would stand up and say, I have forgiven the people who killed my parents. I mean, I was, I was greatly taught. So I brought them together and brought the children of the inner city mission of Christ Embassy Church and brought them together. And um, we had a great time. I was there. That day. Oh, yes, you were. I was there. Yeah. What is inner city mission? Um, it's, a, it's a concern, a movement initiated by Pastor Chris Oyakilome okay. of the Believer's Love World, yeah. Christ Embassy. Okay. And it does not seek to take all the children in Nigeria off many. the streets because there are quite many. But it seeks instead to demonstrate what we can do wherever you are, what we can do. If you look around you, you'll find children who are hurting. You'll find children who are deprived. You'll find children who are totally unparented. If you look around you, you will see that there is something you can give. So the inner city mission goes out, picks these families, these children, and sometimes with their mothers, and um, 
We've put them in a school, give them free education, clothe them, feed them, give them a future. And most of all, teach them the word of God. Because it's not enough to give a bag of rice. It's not enough to give clothing and money. When these things run out, you, 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 in short, you will need to put in them the ability to create wealth righteously. You would need to put in them the ability to live for themselves and fend for themselves, love other people, and be a blessing to society at large. And that's what we're doing at the inner city. You know, sometimes when we talk about it, yes. you're very passionate about that's it. That's right. What made you decide? Is it a, a passion or is it empathy? I mean, is it that you led that life or is it that something God led you? Don't answer that question. Answer it when we come back. I see. <laughs> Don't go anywhere. We'll, we'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back. So, why did you decide? Did you lead that life or is just a passion? Well, first of all, this is something that Jesus told us to do. Yeah. Well, first and foremost, it's in obedience to the word of God that I, indeed all of us, should look out for these children, the less privileged, wherever they are. Have you ever seen the face of a crying child? You'd see anger, some measure of anger and frustration. But when you see the face of a dying child, it's worse. It's full of questions. I have. I've seen the face of a dying child. It's full of questions. Does it have to be? What have I done wrong? What is happening? Where am I going? And so on and so forth. And um, anybody who's had that kind of experience would definitely be moved to do something. And um, I think it's a worthy cause. When you had your Judah lunch, you talked about the Vice Chancellor and Scholarship for the Children. That's right. Yes. The yes. Vice Chancellor of um, Babcock University yes. graciously offered to help the children, the graduates, when they come out of these um, schools, they can come to Babcock University, and Babcock University would help to further their education. education. Yes. Professor Makide, the Vice Chancellor of Babcock University would like to make a statement. My dear brother, good evening, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. I don't like being emotional, but I, I feel what I've seen here tonight pushes me to the brink. I just want to praise the Lord for the ministry of Brother Bucci and for all those who are lending to the Lord. Um, it's amazing what we ignore that we don't even know is happening right under our noses. And I want to praise the Lord for each and every one that is here tonight. I almost turned back myself, but I'm glad that I didn't. I'd like to pledge that we will part Cork University will partner with you to make sure that these children not only are kept on the road, but that they actually have the best in education that the land can offer. That was a wonderful thing. I was really touched by that gesture. They, when you went for the concert at Adekiti University, yes. Uh, who follows up when you do the um, when they give their lives to Christ. Because sometimes you finish this ministration, they give their lives to Christ. If you really don't follow up, or you have somebody follow up, mm. they could just derail. Yes, but I usually work with the campus fellowships okay. in these schools. Um, the thing with cultists, or people in confraternities, okay. yes, is that um, they need people of their kind to talk to them. They need people of their kind to relate with them, to share the word of God with them. It's not enough for us to go there from the outside. You, you need, we need to talk to the people, the student fellowships there. They are the ones who understand, who are in the same situation with these people. They know what they, they, they are going through and some of the motivations that they have, they share with these ones as well. So I work with the campus fellowships and when people give their hearts to Christ after the ministration, I hand them over to the fellowships. The children, Which how do they go about it? Which is the beautiful thing about 
these organizations. Yeah. I don't own a I home know, I know, myself, I know, I know, but I, know. I thought to myself, what do I have that I can give to them? I can give them my face, which people know. I can give them my name, which people know. And if I say to people, give me, I will give to these people. Yeah. They can trust me to give Thank to me, you. and I'll hand over to these people. I don't know how they do these things, but they've taken me to some of the, of the places. And that's how come I know that even here in Lagos, some people live on refuse heaps. Not that they go there to pick food to eat. They live, people live, sleep and wake up on refuse bins. I've been there. And I, um, let me share this with you. We went to this place um, and found a mother with three children under a high tension transformer. Just buy a high tension transformer. Nepa transformer. That was her, her, her place. She, they, they live there, they wake up there, and, and I found that this, this, I saw another family there, a mother with two children. What was this other woman doing there? And this one says, the one with three children says, oh, their house got burnt, and I brought her to share this place with me. If a woman who lives under the, trans or by the transformer, under the high tension wires, had something to give to another woman in that situation, certainly we all have something that we can give. That for me was instructive. You know, seeing that woman in that desperate situation, being able to lend a hand to another person. So we all have something to give. How is the album doing, Judah? Great, great. The reception is wonderful. And, and um, in no time it spread everywhere. And I'm grateful to God. Yes. Is the video out yet? No, I'm working on it. How is music? I know you hardly have time. You're always in one place doing one concert or one place doing one concert. How does it feel when you go? Because I, I remember the last time we spoke, you talked about when you go out and you have all these shows, mm. when people come to give their life to Christ, and that sometimes people just walk up the crowd and drop their guns. Mm. How does that make you feel? greatly fulfilled and um, humbled at the same time. Yeah. It's amazing what the gospel can do. The things that the cane cannot do. The thing, you know, what imprisonment cannot do. For some of us have been there and seen the pain of prisoners. Yes? And sometimes when they come out, they go back to the same crime. What the prison could not do. What the cane, the whips could not do. A young man walks into church, walks out. A different person. <laughs> two hours later, a totally different person, without an appetite for sin anymore, mm. without an appetite for violence and crime anymore. That's what a miracle. Hold the thought, hold the thought. Don't go anywhere, we'll be right back. Okay, you're welcome back. How is the family doing? Great, great. So what's your program like this year? <laughs> Full already? Um, no, what I've done this year is to deliberately cut down on... Excuse me? Yes, indeed. <laughs> cut down on accepting invitations to go and minister by the direction of the Holy Ghost. Okay. It is time for me to also sponsor and carry out crusades of my own. It's a different thing when somebody calls you and yeah. pays you to come and play at a concert. You know, by the time you go here and there and there and there, before long, I mean, it becomes difficult to tell whether you're doing business or you're this lies, you're, actually is actually fulfilling a purpose. Fulfilling a purpose. Yeah. The next time someone calls you, and your manager speaks to you, you're beginning to, unconsciously, you're beginning to calculate. And to yank myself away from that, I decided that this year I'm going to organize music crusades. Nobody is going to pay me. I'll go to those locations with my music set, gather people, get the churches around to work with me, 
and minister to the people in music and, and get souls saved. Jesus is coming soon. Jesus is coming very soon. Get souls saved and hand them over to these churches. I think I'll be a lot more fulfilled doing that. But, uh, yes, you'll be a lot more fulfilled. And when you celebrate our fifth anniversary with us in July, yes, <laughs> I play for us. <laughs> so I'm using this uh, medium to invite you. Yeah, to, using uh, this medium to publicly commit me to that. I'm event. committing. You're already committed. I'm glad. I'm, thank I'm you. glad. Thank you. Buchi, thank you. Thank you so much for your time. It's wonderful just sitting here and talking with you. Thank you. And I pray that um, whatever purpose God has set you out to fulfill, mm. you'll fulfill it. Amen. And Edify, glorify God, and edify God's people. Um, we look forward to having you again if something wonderful happens. Thank you very much. You're always welcome. Maybe to testify of the souls that will come in as I go on these music yes, crusades. Yes, yes, yes. Thank yes, you yes, so yes. much. Whenever you're ready to go, please come. We'll talk about Thank it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Richie. God bless you. My pleasure. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. For your time um, what exactly are you going through what has God laid in your heart to do what is that pain believe me God is speaking to you and there's a purpose you have to fulfill so wake up get up from that pain and find out why God has allowed you to go through that and believe me once you begin to heal you'll be able to use your pain to heal other people and comfort them with the same comfort you have been comforted until I come your way another time, my name is Uduak Abasi, meaning God's will, perfect will of God. You have a great week ahead of you, and goodbye. His word made flesh, he was yet.